Okay, so if I'm using that upside down egg as my starting point, and I have used those halfway proportions, the top of the head and the bottom of the chin, to establish the position of the eyes, right? So I've got the position of the eyes somewhere, hopefully, in in that position. The the bottom of the nose again, halfway between the top of the, uh, or excuse me, position of the eyes and the bottom of the chin, and then the opening of the mouth again, another halfway point, right? So those halfway points have been established. Let's say that I've drawn a little more specifically the shape of the head. I think for this particular. Uh, person, you know, there are some shifts that I would want to be making and one of them is because of his nice round cheeks, I'm gonna make those just a little bit wider down here at the bottom than this kind of, you know, typical kind of formula of the upside down A. And then I might give a little more room for the very top of the head as well, right? So we all have those you know, slightly different proportions. I'm gonna fit the ears between the eyes and the nose, right? The neckline, it looks like it intersects maybe about right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just start with the side of my charcoal to lay in the values. And over here on the left side of the face, the left side of the face is all in shadow. Just a little tiny bit of highlight over on the very left side. So I'm going to kind of cover this whole section of the head with the side of the charcoal. And even this early in the game, I could put some of this value over here on the right side too, just to kind of establish where some of those lighter, you know, where the lighter shadows are happening over on the right. So the eye socket underneath the nose, the upper lip is more in shadow, and then the bottom of the cheek starts to get in shadow as well, right? So things are kind of murky, a little blurry, right? They're not super specific at this point. And that's exactly how you want it to be at the beginning, right? Especially with a, a charcoal drawing. So you move from generalities towards specifics. But now what I'm gonna do is to start to get a little bit more aggressive with my, with my black tone. And the, the ear over here on the left is pretty much all in shadow. The whole cheek down here at the bottom is all in shadow. The area underneath the eyebrow is in shadow. And I'm kind of ignoring the bright places right now. And I'm gonna go back with some of those brighter areas with my eraser to try to pull some of those back out. But I just wanna get those darks right here. So the bottom of the nose, the opening of the nostril. And the opening of the mouth. And what I'm discovering as I continue down is that I need a little more room down here for the bottom of the chin, but I can still do that because I haven't gotten super dark yet. So let's push that down a little more, give myself some more room. So I'm darkening up the, the hairline just a little more. And then the shadow on the upper section of the forehead, really super dark. And maybe at this point, I 
might start to blend some of this texture into the paper a little bit, right? Because I've got a lot of roughness and kind of extra, extra stuff going on here. I'm gonna let some of that fall off my my paper, and then I'm gonna soften that a little bit with my finger, work it into the surface. You can also think of your, your finger as another drawing instrument, right? It's just a little bit whiter and softer than your stick of charcoal or your pencil. And now I'm gonna start to lean a little more aggressively on the end of my stick of charcoal. So I'm using the point of it now. So I still know where the eyes are going to be because I put those general shapes of shadow in there and those were based on my halfway, halfway marks that I put at the very beginning of the process. And I'm also going to give a little more definition to the, the edge of the ear to make that shape just a little bit more defined, a little more hard edged. And that also is going to help me define the edge of the head a little more. Now, something I'm also gonna be thinking about is the shape around the edge of the, the nose down here at the bottom. It gets a little bit darker down here, and it is a little more visible, but then it kind of softens out as it meets, meets the cheek. And, and then the shape of the mouth moves up in this very, vertical edge, but then dips down over on the right. It's not quite as dark over on the right side, but the upper lip is still very dark compared to what's happening in the bottom lip. There's a shadow on the left side of the bottom lip, but then most of the rest of the lip is in, in the light, right? Because it, it's facing upward as our bottom lips do. And then where the shadow of the, of the corner of the eye meets the rest of the nose, you know, it starts to soften out right here through the middle, right? Because there's not necessarily a hard line on the side of the nose. So I want to make sure I'm not, I'm not putting a hard line where there doesn't need to be one. And then as I continue, you know, if I were to keep drawing here for the right side of the face, for example, the, you know, the point of the charcoal, the end of that stick of charcoal is obviously what I would be using to define the other eye. There's a, an ex, that extra line above the eyelid. Right, so all of that stuff would be defined with the, the point of the stick of the charcoal. Right? And things like eyebrows, you know, we tend to, sometimes we can overdo them quite easily. So just think about those in terms of light and dark, primarily in terms of light and dark. And then one way that if we, you know, if I were to continue, for example, with the left side of the face, 
I might still do a little more softening with my with my finger just because I want the cheeks to 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 have that kind of look of soft skin, right? So maybe integrating that tone work just a little more, right? Um, next thing I want to be using though with this charcoal drawing is my pink eraser. So um, I have gone over the white of the eyes, so I'm going to try to pull those back out just a little more using my eraser. This really small shape of white is really difficult to work around with the side of a stick of charcoal. So sometimes I let myself go over it and then go back and pull it back out. Not always easy to erase charcoal, obviously, but it's something else you can use. The more drawing materials you kind of explore with, you can use white chalk and you can use white back into a charcoal drawing. You can buy sticks of white just like you can buy, you know, sticks of charcoal. So if you want to invest in a couple of pieces of white contact crayon or white chalk to use in your charcoal drawings. It works pretty well. Here though, I'm just pulling those out with my eraser. And there might be a couple more highlights in the bottom of the lip that I would want to erase back into also. All right, so if I kept going with with my charcoal, I've got some some bits and stray marks I would need to erase, I think, you know, as I kept working. Whoops, I don't want to use the back of my hand to brush things off because I'm putting the, the gray right back onto it if, <laughs> if I use my use my hand. So try to use something like a clean tissue or something, you know, a cotton ball even works pretty well to brush off your eraser marks. So the development of this would keep going, I think, with the sharpening of some of the details and bringing out some more of the features. I think the the, the, the line work could go just a little bit further in places like, you know, for example, the exact shape of the nostrils. I could bring that a little more. I could bring out some more details in the eyes, that, that kind of thing, even the, the texture and the, the shading in the, the top of the head and the hair, right? So keep, keep going, but this is a, a good base, starting with the generalities of using the side of your charcoal and then switching to the point of it to start to get some of those, some of those more, more highly refined kind of details. Last thing I'll do here is I've got that little bit of light that reflects back onto the side of the head over here on the left. So let's go ahead and put that in. And then it kind of fades out towards the rest of the forehead and the hairline, right about there. Right? So that's going to help separate that from the ear. And then if I, you know, start to kind of figure, well, the ear can be a little bigger and I can, you know, adjust the proportions with that too. But at least now I have some contrast between the dark shadowed ear and the rest of the face right here from what's happening um you know on the very edge of the face over here on the left side okay so some pretty dark shading in the rest of that cheek but it transitions up to kind of a highlight on the side of the head up there right okay good hopefully that helps us a little bit in terms of your progress with your charcoal portraits those of you who are using black and white media